11 hard commits, big uh, addition today. I don't want to mess up this name. Is it Eno Etta, the defensive lineman out of uh, Texas? Eno Etta, yeah, out of Texas. Um, he picked Michigan, looks like over MSU was part of his uh, his his final list as well. Um, it's a that's a, another you know nice addition um, for let's be honest, a recruiting uh, class thus far for Harbaugh has been uh, underwhelming, um, and you know it's interesting, Mark, when you you see how certain fans look at recruiting, right? It, it, you know, you have a certain segment of fans who who are just worried Saturday to Saturday about how the team is looking. They're not thinking two years down the line, which is a lot of times where this, that you see the true impact of a recruiting class, you know, and, you know, you know, you have a lot of fans that will say stuff like, well, oh my God, look at our team coming back this year. You know, we have our we have a weak schedule, which we really do. Um, you know, we essentially only have maybe three or four games tops, uh, in which we go going in. We know we have to bring our A game to make sure we come out on top. Maybe even two games that you have to bring your A game to win. Um, so you know, Michigan should at least have ten wins this year. So look, look we're going well. We just want to get ten. The program is in is in a good, uh, a healthy uh, place. However. Recruiting and the lack thereof, it's like a speeding train that is coming from behind you. You can't, you can only outrun it for so long. And when it finally hits, when the impact truly shows itself, it's not like a slow, <laughs> a slow uh, pain. Like a train, it actually knocks you over and runs you over, you know, because you see that huge talent drop off. And we saw a lot of that with, you know, uh, MSU and Mark Antonio. I mean, why do you think? You know, Mel Tucker was dipping to the transfer portal so much. Why did he overturn the Michigan State roster? So, you know, why did he attempt to do that so quickly? It's because of the lack of uh, recruiting success that Mark Antonio had. And, you know, and it's one of those things where, yeah, Michigan may have a really good season this year, but what happens when J.J. goes to the NFL or he leaves or, you know, he moves on? Dalvin Edwards, you know, Ronnie Bell. You know, you have to constantly be – uh, replacing um, these kids, and um, you can't just have one or two. You know, you have to have multiple, multiple four stars. Maybe get a couple five stars here and there, and while at the same time cultivating and finding hidden gems of kids who are two or three stars, and finding out ways to help expand their game and help help them elevate. Right? If you hope to maintain um, your level of play, which is to be a Big Ten contender every year to win it. And maybe a CFP uh, contender as well. Me personally, I felt after a magical season last year, finally getting past Ohio State, getting that Big Ten title, getting to the college football playoff, and then having your doors blown off with reality smacking you in the face, seeing Georgia, that this was a transitional year potentially. That maybe we could have kind of rolled that momentum, used that exposure that we had in a CFP maybe get a couple a couple five stars to commit and try to take that next step, right? What's going to happen all in one offseason? We all know that. And it still can happen. But I would say the momentum just doesn't feel there, doesn't feel as uh, high as I thought it would have. And uh, I don't know if that's, you know, how much of Harbaugh's experimentation with Trying to go to the NFL has to do with that. Um, I'm sure it didn't help. <laughs> but um, it's definitely something that Michigan fans need to continue to monitor.